What's good, everybody? We are back with another Call of Duty Mobile video. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day today. So one question I get a lot, both in streams and also in videos, is how to get better as a sniper. And while obviously there are a lot of things that you can do as a sniper to improve your aim and other things like that, so much of being a good sniper is just being able to predict enemies, especially in game modes like Search and Destroy. And I feel like there's not a lot of YouTubers that talk about that and really how to position yourself and set yourself up for success as a sniper. So I actually didn't open the game at all this past weekend and played some games this morning and felt super refreshed and like my decision making was the best that it's been in a really long time. And also I was just hitting my snipes. So today we're gonna be going through some gameplay and showing you guys Kind of the decision making process that a legendary sniper goes through whenever they're playing ranked games, especially in Search and Destroy. And one of these, I actually ended going up against Zia, who's the number one player in the world, and actually top fragged on my team as we beat him pretty easily. So I would say this is some of my best sniper gameplay, and that's part of the reason why I just want to do a little commentary over it to kind of give you guys a step-by-step -step process into what I go through whenever I play a game of Search and Destroy as a sniper. So in this first game, you guys are gonna see I'm absolutely carrying my team, and I would say Crossfire is one of the most important maps to learn how to snipe properly on because it is so effective because of the long range lanes that you're able to access from different points on the map. But without any more talking, we're just gonna go ahead and hop into it. So starting off in our first match, we're gonna be starting at the bottom side or the defending side on Crossfire. Now this is the best side to snipe on for Crossfire for a number of reasons. Number one, you're going to see immediately off the bat, we're going to be able to run up here and get nice cover. There's not really any spots up top that you can get cover well like that, that you can really see everything that's happening. And you can see right there, we're going to get one pick right off the start because everybody is trying to push toward B. You're going to tend, especially in the first couple rounds, if people don't know that you've got good snipers, to get a lot of people crossing without any smokes or covers or anything like that. And now once we've dwindled down the number of people left in the game, we've only got a 4v1. So it's not going to be too difficult for us to clutch up right here. And since I'm missing my snipes on the close range shots, all we really have to do is pull out our pistol. Now, this is going to make me a little bit cocky and we're probably going to end up making a poor decision in the next part right here. So you can see we're going to push pretty aggressively after we take the initial shot right here. We're going to go for the wall bang on the back wall right there. And we're going to try a couple shots right there. We actually get somebody pushing really aggressively into A right there, which you don't see a whole lot. But because we got a pretty wide open lane and he's running straight, we get it right there. And then we're able to peek through right there as well and get another snipe. And then we get somebody chasing through at the bottom and we hit yet another snipe on here. So a lot of this isn't really strategic. A lot of it is just reactionary. And in the split second that I see somebody taking a shot, I'm able to scope in. And in the matches versus Dia, you're going to see more of the strategy that goes into this. But right now, since this is not a super sweaty team, a lot of it is just split second decision making. So you see right there, I actually got a little bit over aggressive and decided to try to push right in the middle lane without any cover. And he actually hits a pretty nice snipe on me right there. So that's my fault because I just got a little bit too cocky. And it's actually going to cost us the round because as you can see, one of our teammates is now in a 1v4 situation, which tends to be pretty tough to clutch up it's all right though because obviously we have the better team and now that we know that they are competent players we can play it slightly less aggressive so we're gonna push up again right here we're gonna try to hit the wall bang sometimes i can get that usually it's only if they're up close to the wall that it'll actually land but every once in a while you can manage to get a lucky wall bang on that we got one guy that goes up into the top side that's usually a pretty easy shot to hit because that wooden wall on the second floor is actually wall bangable. So even if you don't hit the headshot, which is all you can see, typically you'll still tend to get a kill shot, which is why most good players won't go up there. You can see we hold the long angle right there. So we're able to see people coming out toward A, but also people that are on B. So that was actually the first part of a 1v3. We get this next snipe right there. Like I said, Typically, good snipers will not go up into that top area because it's just so easy and you are so overexposed right there. Now, you can see there's a trophy system down on B, which means that the guy guarding it has to be relatively close. I can't see him at all, so I'm going to run around a little bit and just try to get positioning on it because I really have no idea where he is. 
and I'm expecting that he's going to go plant relatively soon, which he does right there. We're going to continue to move around because more than likely he's running around on the backside trying to wait until I go up to defuse. And I'm actually surprised I can see him moving around on the backside behind the bus. I scope in and he's not even moving. So he actually gives us the free kill right there. Just to flex on him, we throw up our UAV and we go ahead and get the defuse. So we're at 10 kills right now. All my teammates combined don't yet have 10 kills. So I'm feeling pretty cocky. And actually after this, I don't get a whole lot of snipes. Mainly because my teammates start to get more aggressive. And they realize they don't want to get outshone too much. And push up a lot harder. There's, like I said, there's a lot of really good long angles on this map, and it's not just down the middle lane like most people tend to look. You can see through this area pretty well, and we actually miss our shot, which I probably should have hit on the S36 user, but that one right there through the hole is another one that you can actually see really far and are able to get some easy snipes on. So my teammates are able to clutch up the 2v1 right there, which is going to bring us to 4-1 and also bring us to the top side, which is definitely a very different sniping strategy. So typically all I'll jump up on the back of the green car right here just to see if there are any people crossing over to B. Unfortunately, my teammates end up smoking, so I'm not able to use that strategy like I normally would. But we do see somebody down bottom trying to snipe off the back of the head glitch on that car. We're able to snipe him right there, and we do have eyes on another guy, and we're able to get this snipe as well. And now we're in a 4v1 situation, and the enemy actually ends up RPGing himself, and we move on to the final round. At this point, my decision making probably isn't going to be great because it's 5-1. I know this is not a great team, so I'm really just trying to get some lucky kills. We're going to throw a nade over top because a lot of time you'll be able to get nade kills kills on people crossing right there we do go up top and we're able to spot somebody both to the right and on that car glitch in the middle we're not able to land shots on him because the hitboxes on cars are a little bit weird and i actually miss a snipe that i probably should have hit right there and we're going to end up taking the l but fortunately my teammates are able to clutch up and win the round my teammates got eyes on him and gets the shotgun kill to finish the game now keep in mind the people i'm playing with in this game are not scrubs hope who came in third, is actually currently the number four player in ranked in the world right now. So the fact that I was able to outfrag him by that amount felt pretty good to me, especially given the fact that he's typically a sniper player. So in our next game, we're going to be playing Crash, Search and Destroy versus the number one player in the world right now. His username is Zia. You guys can check him out. Honestly, in this first round, we didn't have a very good game plan. I took the bomb and went A, but didn't really communicate with my teammates. And so because of that, most people got picked off or were just confused about what we were doing. We have one teammate that's up here at the top trying to watch B long, which is definitely something you need to have someone doing. But because of that, we didn't get any pressure going to A. Now that we got him with us and all three of us are together, we can kind of work as a unit. So one thing I typically like to do is go behind this dumpster and get a trophy down because there are a lot of long angles that you can see whenever you are right here. While you also have a decent amount of cover and because you got a trophy there, you don't have to worry about grenades or RPGs. But because I know that the enemy is inside of A, I'm going to actually choose to go and push B with my teammates instead and make sure to communicate that to them. We're going to constantly check B long just because we want to make sure that nobody's going to snipe us. And I'm actually hearing footsteps, which end up being my teammates footsteps, because for some reason he's not using dead silence. We're going to continue to push and the enemy is actually going to alert us that he knows that we're going to be right there. You can see Zia says hold B because he accidentally forgot to turn off his all chat. You can see right there, I'm going to spot a guy up top, get an easy snipe right there, and we've got it into a 3v2, which is going to make life a whole lot easier. I went with the fake defuse real quick just to make sure there's nobody hiding around a corner, and now I'm going to go for the full defuse because I know that there's a guy coming for me, but he's not going to have any angles to hit me yet. So now we can go move to up top. We're going to get an angle on him right there and just barely miss the easy snipe. But I've got a feeling he's going to come around this corner and we're going to be able to get a snipe as he goes through that little middle section. My teammate is able to take out one guy, but we can see he dies over to the left. And so I'm actually going to choke the first shot. And because he's one HP, he dodges, but we take our time, aim in. 
and hit the final shot to get the first round. I'm gonna take the bomb again, and you can see I'm basically the only one pushing toward A right now, which is gonna make this first round really difficult. I've been spotted, and I know he's gonna try to RPG me, so I actually go ahead and throw down that trophy, which ends up saving our life. Unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of help from my teammates, and the guy with the S36 up on the head glitch is being pretty persistent, so there's not a lot I can do for the time being unless somebody on my team gets a pick, which is gonna enable me to push a little bit stronger. That being said, I'm a sniper, so I don't want to be pushing into A too much. And I actually spot somebody down at the bottom right there, but two of our teammates have been picked off already. So it's a three versus five, which makes life a lot more difficult. And because I've got so many teammates watching B long, we're actually now down to a 2v5, which is going to be next to impossible to win. I do see a guy very far over closer to B, but not able to land a shot on him because of the vehicle head glitch. And I'm actually going to get taken out right there because one of their assault rifle players goes ahead and pushes up. And both of our teammates are going to die and it's going to be 1-1. One, one. I decided to switch to the Type 25 for a little bit because especially when you're on offense, it helps a lot more to have weapons that you can actually push into buildings with. And it's just really difficult to do with a sniper rifle. So you can see we have a much more together push right here. Every single player is pushing in. You can see the people on the longer angles. So one of my teammates is getting taken out. But Fuse is actually able to take out two other players right there. And we're now in a 4v3 situation. I know that most of the enemies have been taken out. So I'm going to able to be... I'm going to be able to plant the bomb right there, and since it's a 3v3 situation, all I really need to do is listen for the sound of a defuse or make sure nobody's coming over the top to get us. Because of that reason, doing this movement right here just makes it a lot easier to monitor every possible way that somebody could get you. You can see we're in a 2v1 situation right here, so I'm trying to look out for where an enemy could be. I don't see anyone, I don't hear anything, so I'm just going to keep on monitoring everything the way that I am right here. And eventually we are going to hear the diffuse sound, which is going to cause us to push in. I miss a bunch of shots there because it's tough to hit somebody over the top of that bomb. But by this time, there's no way the enemy can win anyway. So even if I had lost that gunfight a couple seconds ago, we still would have won because I played time well enough to win the round. So my teammates have said to rush B. I didn't really want to push B because pushing A works so well that first time. And you can see one of our teammates has already gotten picked off. But fortunately, Hope is able to get somebody off of be long they're expecting my full team to be pushing b so i'm a little bit sketched out right now but we try to get shots right there i actually miss my ads button because i know he's not gonna be able to follow me that close i get the reload off and actually manage to win a close range gunfight right there because i know my teammates are fighting all the enemies on b long i go for the plant and just go for the fake plant one time just to check and see if there's anybody upstairs we get the plant down, and because it's a 4v2, I don't have to be too terribly careful, but I can watch the top side just to try to help out my teammates a little bit, and because it still leaves me close enough to be able to hear whether or not somebody is defusing the bomb. I can hear my teammate in a gunfight, so I go and check. Nobody over there. Honestly, not a whole lot to worry about, given that we've already got the plant down, and you can actually see the gunshots on the map right there. I'm going to go ahead and check that angle. I know he's going to be going all the way around because my teammate's challenging right there, so all I really have to do is hold this angle right there and i see i lose a teammate right there i actually lose this gunfight really badly and pretty impressive shots by him but by this point in the game we've already won this round as well i tell my teammates to rush a again because as you can see rushing a has been working pretty well so far and they haven't really found a good way to stop us from getting to where we need to be we might lose one or two players in the process but for the most part it's worked because we've been able to take out more people than we've lost i'm a little bit on the defensive side when we're pushing just because i know they're probably aware of the fact that we're going to be pushing a but after trying to take a couple shots i do push in i hear gunshots upstairs so i'm trying to back up my teammates to the best of my ability and he actually hopped down off the top of the building which i completely didn't expect i probably should have because i knew there was somebody on the top floor but i assumed i'd be able to chase him up and he actually gets the shots on me right there our teammates left in a 1v3 with a revolver so obviously he's probably not gonna be able to win that bringing it to three to two but now we're on the defensive side which i like a lot better i tell my teammate to hold b long because i know that he's a good sniper and he can hold down that angle and i actually run the assault rifle for the first round but i'm gonna switch soon because i do love sniping on defense for crash you can see we're able to get a grenade kill right there off the start and put us at the advantage with five to four i don't know why i decided to challenge 
challenge that because anybody that's going to be sitting up top of there at the beginning of the round is going to be a sniper. And sniper versus assault rifle fights usually go to the advantage of the sniper. There's no need for us to push, so currently my teammates are just kind of holding down their angles, checking to make sure nobody is able to push toward the bomb sites. And we're actually able to get another snipe right there to bring it down to 3-2. to two. Sahan takes a body shot right there, but because he's not dead yet, he's able to retreat, recover his HP and reassess the situation he knows there was somebody sniping at the top of their spawn so right now he's just going to keep checking his long angles and more than likely they're going to be pushing out of yellow building but he's not going to be able to get a good angle from the top of the three story i kind of figured that they were going to be pushing b so i told my teammates to guard it and ends up being able to get a kill right there but this next gunfight is not a pretty one so they have a 2v1 situation but because the sniper is not watching his teammates back the one teammate gets taken out loses the gunfight Fight, and Sahan is missing his snipe so it's not looking great for us right now he's hoping that he gets somebody back in that corner right there but the guy's actually already retreated to the truck which is going to be a lot more difficult for him to win a gunfight in especially since he's the one that needs to defuse the guy plays it really well forces him to push up and wins the gunfight because he's got the assault rifle in the situation so it's now 3-3 at this point i am gonna switch to the sniper and go to one of my favorite angles in the game and that is this yellow building shot so a lot of times i'm able to hit this this is a primarily luck shot that's just based off your ability to time when somebody's gonna be going through that yellow building not really Honestly, probably nobody in the world has a reaction time fast enough to be able to hit that shot just based off when they see the person. But if you're able to time it well enough, sometimes you can get somebody crossing right there. We've already got it down to 5-2, to two, so I don't really need to worry about a whole lot. And I can push relatively aggressively, not that I necessarily need to. Uh, but we got it down to a 5-1, so right now I can basically just let my teammates go ahead and get that last kill. I do see that one of my teammates has died inside the three story, so I'm going to push up. I know that the guy's probably not expecting me to push up. And we actually have a teammate push up to the top floor, and he dies as well. I know that the other guy's probably weak, so I just pull out my pistol, land a couple shots on him, and we're up 4-3. So I'm going to let Hope continue to hold down B-Long, because he's doing it pretty well so far. I don't want to base whether or not we win this off of luck, so I decided I wasn't going to go for the snipe through the yellow building in the middle, and instead just try to play it smart. We see a guy right there, but I'm not quite able to hit either of those snipes right there, because we do have a lot of obstacles. I can see that Hope actually died off the back of b-long which more than likely means that the other team is pushing into b and right now we don't have anybody guarding it but fortunately fuse is able to get an smg kill right there and we've got it down to 4-2 which makes it a lot easier and we're actually able to clean that one up pretty quickly since we're up by two rounds i start to get a little more aggressive once again and you can see we're gonna go for the pre-nade that i usually like to start around that first pillar i'm gonna throw down the trophy system just in case and we're gonna push to this little spot right there which gives us an easy angle on their spawn and you can see we pick one off right there We've got it four to four right now, which is definitely not any type of advantage. But for a sniper, the fewer people in the map, the better. And one of their players actually dies to a trip mine right there. I get a nasty flick on that player. And honestly, right now, he's just mad. That hop up is a really good spot for a sniper because a lot of times you'll be able to catch people up close off guard. But also moving in a super straight line that makes it really easy. We've got it in a three to one situation. So even though my teammates are going to push out, I'm going to try to stay relatively close to bombs. So even if I'm not looking exactly at the bomb, if I hear that they picked up the bomb i know exactly where they are and can predict where they're going i hear my teammates shooting so i figure the game is probably pretty close to over he says hold b but i know that there's not much of a need for it because i'm on the bomb and there's no way they can plant it there so we actually end up getting the win six to three against the number one player in the world i was top frag on my team not necessarily top in kills but top in points because of the amount of times that i planted and diffused and as you can see, we get the MVP for the game. Honestly, I think one of the big reasons that I was able to play this game so well is just because I took a break from the game over the weekend and didn't play at all and honestly came back feeling a lot more refreshed because I didn't have that mental fatigue. And you can actually see we outfrag Zia and died fewer times. So I would say this is probably one of the better search and destroy games that I've played overall. But that's going to be it for the video. Let me know what you guys thought on this style of video is, whether you like it, whether you don't like it. Is it boring? Is there specific aspects of the game that you'd like for me to talk about more or 
some things maybe you want me to talk about less. I honestly don't even know. My primary aim for this video was honestly just to help you guys learn how to snipe better, especially on Search and Destroy, which is determined so much by how you position yourself to the rest of the map and how you put yourself in a position to be able to hit your snipes. But that's going to be it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time.